Hello there. Peabody here. And that's my boy Sherman over by the Wayback Machine. The Wayback's all warmed up, Mr. Peabody. Careful, Chief. You dig up the past. All you get is dirty. Excellent, Sherman. Our target for today will be... MSNBC investigates. Tattoos. They're everywhere. On celebrities, athletes, even teenagers at the mall. Small and cute to big and bold. Tattoos are going extreme. You want to be scared? You're in the right place. Tattoos. The wild, the shocking, the extreme. When my work offends people, I love it. They are the new national trend. Why is daddy such a freak with all the skulls and maggots? Nearly 12 million Americans have at least one tattoo, but for some, one is not enough. The legend of Sleepy Hollow, the entire leg. The dentist scene from the Three Stooges. Meet the people who go to extremes. What does their skin art say about them? What does it say about our society? And how safe is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, my question is, is now, how you're gonna feel about this, let's say in like another 15 years from now, though. Travel with us into a world unknown on this MSNBC Investigates, Tattoos, Skin Deep. Reporting now, Lester Holt. Tattoos have long been a part of our culture. But until recently, they were mostly for men who went off to fight wars. Not anymore. Now men and women are showing off their tattoos. In fact, nearly 12 million Americans have at least one. Trend or not, the modern tattoo industry is huge and growing bigger every year. With a $400 tattoo gun like this one, a tattoo artist can easily do 1,000 tattoos a year, charging as much as $100 an hour. That adds up to a nice six-figure income. For many people, though, tattoos are still taboo. Critics say they are unsightly, even a form of mutilation. Over the next hour, we're going to take a look at tattoos to the extreme and the people obsessed with them. You'll be amazed, perhaps even shocked, by what some people will do with their bodies. Tattoos. For so long, a taboo art reserved for the fringes of American society have come into a renaissance in the past few years. Now, everybody seems to be getting tattoos, little pieces that can be hidden, to the large, bold, everyday display pieces. New styles and techniques have given this trade a new face. Everywhere you look, people from all walks of life are beginning to adorn their skins. It is estimated that one out of every 10 Americans has a tattoo, and teenage females make up the largest growing group going under the needle. But with so many people getting tattooed, the want to shock and stay outside the norm has caused some to push the envelope and to get their whole bodies tattooed and modified in new ways. This is the world of skin art. Individuals who, for different reasons, have decided to mark themselves permanently, and the artists are using the human body as their canvas. There's a whole range of public to private in what people do with tattoos. There are certain people who have full body tattoos that you would never know because they hide them with clothes for some situations. 24-year-old Robert York of Merrick, Long Island, works in the mainstream where he feels the need to cover up but with little untattooed skin left, his secret is hard to keep. When I worked at Bloomingdale's, I was working in, uh, in sales. So, you know, shirt and tie every day, suit, behind the, like, the watch counter being like, hi, hey, you know, like real soft-spoken. And then sometimes I'd have to reach for something. They see the little arm peek out and you see them, you know, nudging somebody being like, oh, you know, he's got, you know, look at his arm. Look at his arm. And I kind of just usually ignore that stuff. It was the quality of art available that convinced Robert when he was 18 that he didn't want just one tattoo, but that he wanted a lot of tattoos. Like, I hung out with a pretty like tough guy or wannabe tough guy Long Island crowd, and, and they were all getting tattoos. I started hanging out a little bit more in the city, going to hardcore shows, seeing all those covered guys, and then I saw a big program on the Japanese guys, and I said, you know what? I don't really want a tattoo here or a tattoo there. I want to look like that. I want to be fully covered. Most of Robert's family members do not know of his tattoos. The work on his body caused a major rift between himself, his mother, and his late father. 
He believes his Aunt Linda and 10-year-old cousin John are a bit more receptive to his style. This is my little cousin Johnny. Hi. And he's the only one that lets me do tattoos on him. So you don't really want any real tattoos, though, when you get older, right? Mm -mm. He doesn't like them for himself, but he, he likes the fact that I have them. Just, everyone should be like that. Instead of like my mom, she doesn't like them, so she thinks that I shouldn't have any, you know? Cool. While Robert's aunt and cousin know about his tattoos, they've never seen the full picture till now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and turn. Yeah, there's that. And it's underneath him as well? A little bit. Uh, see, my question is, is now, how you're going to feel about this Let's say in like another 15 years from now, though. Or well, my main concern would be like now you're gonna eventually, I guess, someday have kids. The front is nice and colorful. It's just that I find the well, back like a little drab. Well, I'm gonna color in the back. Oh, you know? Okay. When I first started, <laughs> when I first started off, I just wanted black and gray, like you know, typical Geiger, black and gray, New York City hardcore looking, you know, tough tattoos. And then the more I got into what is all of this here though? Because this is a different. This is a, a sacred heart uh -huh. with praying hands. And the, this is the, the Gua Blessed Mother. The Guadalupe. Italians say Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother. <laughs> That's Jesus in a space helmet. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I can't give you my honest opinion how I feel. And it just, to me, it looks like you're wearing a shirt. Yeah. A very busy shirt. <laughs> Robert's tattoos were discovered while he was training to be an airline attendant. It did not go over quite so well. They put us up in a hotel, and I think uh, someone, a head honcho executive or something, was staying in the hotel or something, saw me, the full picture, said he got some on his fingers, and I really think that they just okay. used the fingers as an excuse, because I could have covered them up. Robert has started a training program to work for an upscale watch store in Manhattan. He'll be working the counters and is expected to wear a suit. For Robert, it's another opportunity to live a double life. I feel like Clark Kent now. You know, the glasses. So, I couldn't convince a hot alternative girl, like alternative looking girl on the train that like, I'm not a yuppie. Yeah, people either don't give you the time of day either way. I can have a three hour conversation with a stockbroker on a train, but if I'm in a t-shirt and shorts, he probably, you know, thinks I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you know, or, uh, and vice versa. Even while tattoo has become more mainstream and somewhat more accepted, for many people it still is important as something that marks identity and marks it as something, again, that is not totally the norm. Tattoos are not only for the young. Kurt Hoffman, now 85, did not start getting tattooed until his 70s, after his wife passed away and he retired from his job with the phone company. Kurt showed up. Showed up at our doorstep at Rising Dragon one day with a big poster of a bunny rabbit. Okay. Not, not a bunny rabbit. Oh, it's a hair. Sorry. <laughs> a hair. I forgot. It's a hair. When you see him, you know, like coming down the street, you never think that this old guy got a bunch of tattoos, you know? Well, it seems like everyone is getting tattooed. When and how one displays his or her art is a big question. That's a nice choice. The stereotype of a tattoo is slowly melting away. But many feel the need to conceal their passions for tattoos to avoid awkward situations or to keep the taboo nature of their art alive. I think at the same time, people like the fact that it's still a little rebellious and has that, you know, yeah. like I think that's why a lot of people want to do it because they want to be a little dangerous and they want to have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of the bad side well, to them. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I wear a suit on the outside every day to work, but I have this secret. Uh, you know, this it's secret. A, it's a, a, a sort of a naughty feeling. Right, right, exactly. When we return, the state of the art of tattoo and the macabre world of premier tattooist Paul Booth. <laughs> With a new generation of networks that put the full power of the net right where you need it.
Traditionally, tattoo work in America was limited to common designs or flash. The potential tattoo client was forced to choose an image that had been used on countless numbers of others. Now, a variety of different styles and custom works are available to those who wish to wear a mark that sets them apart from the rest. But as the quality of tattoos has gone up, so has the price. Many tattoo artists now charge between one and two hundred dollars per hour. There are a lot of different popular styles of tattooing. Um, you've got what seems to be very popular over the last, let's say, ten years is tribal, uh, black tribal tattooing. You've got black and gray, which is um, portraiture. A lot of times you'll see skulls done in black and gray style. You've got this, what we're calling traditional sailor stuff, uh, you know, hearts and banners and roses and daggers. And then I think there's this new school stuff. One of the new styles to emerge, however, is of the darker variety. Paul Booth is one of the country's most sought after tattoo artists. And with a wait list of over two years, he needs a manager to handle his appointments. He has been working in the tattoo medium for 11 years, creating black and iconoclastic pieces of skin art. I'm Paul Booth, tattoo artist in New York City. I'm known for dark, creepy, macabre related art on the skin. I just keep delving deeper and deeper into everyone's dark side. That's what I do. I have a knack for touching on that, that nerve, you know, everyone's dark side of their nature that they normally hide or shun, you know, and I kind of throw in their face and make them look at it, you know, and make them think about it. Negative reactions to Paul's work only seem to spur him on to create more shocking pieces of art. When my work offends people, I love it, you know. If a little old lady looks at me in disgust, I love it, you know. I've had death threats from Christians. I get hate mail all the time, you know. People will be like, repent, repent. As a visual artist, I mean, we all want to express and, and, and be seen or affect people in some way. I and mean, to me, that's what art is. At the three-day Crazy Eddie tattoo convention in Philadelphia, Paul has the chance to unwind and socialize. But he knows he'll be swamped by people waiting to get tattooed by him all weekend. Artists and enthusiasts from all over the country have gathered together at the convention to look at tattoos, get tattoos, and show off their work. It's a chance for the tattoo culture to come together under one roof to celebrate the art. We want a showcase actually here for the public to see it. And we don't want any sloppy looking tattoos or bad, poorly done tattoos here. We want only the best to be shown here. Even though Chuck Saloom lives in Brooklyn, he has motorcycled the 100 miles to Philadelphia for the chance to get a Paul Booth tattoo. I've been following the guy around. I really like his work, but it's hard to get an appointment with him. And I hear he doesn't take appointments here. First come, first serve. So I've been here since yesterday. I want to get the, uh, some angel killing a demon to swoop in. Nice piece. I'm not really comfortable doing that at a show, all right? Straight up. You know, I know you've been waiting. I'm sorry, but the ultimate, like, the ultimate thing is that the tattoo is right, you know what I mean? And uh, since, I mean, he came down here specifically for that, or, or, then I'll let you on the priority list, regardless of my manager kicking my ass. Although Chuck has to wait to get an appointment with Paul back in New York, the last right stall was busy all weekend. Approximately 5,000 people attended the convention. Paul completed nine new pieces, and close to 600 people walked away from the convention with new tattoos. After a packed weekend, Paul is back to New York to prepare for the Roseland Convention. In the city, Paul is not the only artist with clients who seek tattoos out of the ordinary. Manhattan's East Village has always been a magnet for bohemians, artists, and youth culture, and the cluster of tattoo studios that have sprung up in this trendy neighborhood are not lacking in customers. It was here that Anil Gupta started his American tattooing career when he came from his native India in 1991. Over the years, he's developed a unique take on tattooing and has earned a large clientele that seeks his services. 
he has become famous for reproducing the works of the masters on skin. The level of art has improved to a level where you cannot differentiate between uh, the art and canvas and, and a tattoo. If we took a close-up shot by a camera and if you, if you hold tight and not show the skin around it, and I would bet you that you would not differentiate between the painting and some of the stuff you see on canvas. And uh, with that kind of level of art, I think it's not very hard for someone to say, hey, I want that, it looks like art, and I don't mind hanging a painting in my room, occupy a seven by four canvas I can carry on my arm. Although he has mastered all of the genres of tattooing, Anil tries very hard not to be known for any one particular style. I think when someone tells me that if I have a style, I think I failed in my mission. My job is to look completely invisible in this whole medium. When people look at my tattoo, they go, wow, that's a great image. If I'm doing somebody's portrait, I want people to say, that looks like a great image of a person. That's supposed to be a great style image. I want the work to speak for itself. Anil is also set apart from others in his profession in that he is one of very few tattoo artists who has not gone under the needle themselves. I'm not ready for it, you know. I'm waiting for a big moment in my life, something really, really big. Although tattooing is becoming hugely popular in the 21st century, the fact is the art of tattooing has been around since before recorded history. In 1991, a mummy over 5,000 years old was discovered in the Italian Alps that had tattoos on his back and legs. In the spring of 2000, the American Museum of Natural History in New York hosted Body Art, an exhibit featuring tattoo works from several cultures throughout history. Curator Dr. Enid Childkraut believes the current trend towards tattooing is due to advances in the craft as an art form. There are a lot of people now who see tattoos as a work of art and they see the skin as a kind of uh, media that's really quite unique and people go in, graphic artists are becoming tattooers and people are seeing their own tattoos as kind of walking collections of art. Coming up, tattoos of devotion, the man who gave his life to a mouse, and the New York City Tattoo Convention. For many, tattoos are an expression of faith, and the devotion they feel inside is proudly displayed on the outside. Religion and cultural identification have for centuries played a major role in the tattoos people choose. For Will Levitino, however, it was his tattoos that led him to his religion. A couple of my friends had these beautiful, beautiful tattoos, and I didn't really know anything about tattoos, but I knew how some looked nice and other ones didn't. I didn't know why, but it turned out the ones that I really liked, this one guy, Kevin Craig, had done most of them and asked him if he'd tattoo me. Kevin Craig agreed to tattoo Will on one okay. condition, that they meet first at a specific spot in Brooklyn. One Sunday night, I find myself here, looked at the paintings on the wall and was absolutely amazed, absolutely the most beautiful paintings I've ever seen. And uh, they started chanting. Will had found himself in the New York center of the Hare Krishna faith. It was completely intoxicating. I mean, it was really amazing, and the, the more and more I found out about it as the night went on, the more and more I liked it. As Will's interest in the Hare Krishna movement grew, so did his collection of tattoos. Over the years, he's adorned his body with Indian deities. Nothing is definite, nothing is forever. I don't know if uh, I'll be following the religion for my entire life, but as far as imagery, it's always going to be beautiful to me. While religious images may seem an obvious choice for a devotional tattoo, sometimes one's devotions can stray to the unusual. Dave Rossi is a 24-year-old systems analyst for Prudential Life Insurance. He is single and lives with his parents in Nutley, New Jersey, 15 miles from New York City. Dave has taken his bizarre devotion to musician Weird Al Yankovic to the extreme. He goes to all of Yankovic's concerts, has a vast collection of paraphernalia, maintains a Weird Al website. I also have one more special thing, which I carry around with me everywhere I go. And those are my Weird Al tattoos. The signature I got back in 1996, I uh, saw Al at a uh, 
autograph signing, and he signed my leg. And as you can see, he, uh, he took real good care in, in putting it on there once I told him it was going to be permanent. This is Steve J. Steve's uh, the bass player for Weird Al. He's a really, really nice guy. Al's uh, drummer, John Bermuda Schwartz, Jim West, guitar player for, for Weird Al. Dave is off to Hartford, Connecticut to catch a Weird Al show and hopes to see Yankovic after the concert to show off the complete Weird Al band tattoos. Okay, we made it. We're late. He's on his second song. The middle of Polka Power. Dave was able to get backstage to see his idol, Al Yankovic, and show off the tattoo portrait to the man oh, yeah. in the flesh. Oh, that's, that's really great work. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> the concept of somebody having my image permanently on their body for the rest of their lives is that's pretty heady stuff. I mean, that's yeah, huge. I kind of don't know how to react, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very flattered. And uh, oh, thank you. And uh, as long as you're still on your medication, everything will be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the town of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, there's a man who shows his devotion in quite a different way. George Rieger works for the post office, but it is his career as a professional magician performing illusions all over the country that pays for his obsession. George refers to himself as Disney's number one fan. He has been collecting everything Disney, going everywhere Disney, and doing everything Disney his whole life. To him, it only made sense that he should turn himself into everything Disney. For the year 2000, George rushed to have 1,000 Disney tattoos put on his body, but he's far from finished. He has chosen a vintage World War II flying Mickey for number 1001, and he has over 300 designs ready to go. Flesh is becoming limited, forcing George to go smaller and smaller. First tattoo was Fantasia, and it was more or less to have Mickey with me wherever I went. I really didn't like tattoos, honestly. Once I started it, that changed my whole mind once I saw the artwork, and uh, I figured now that I have it, just uh, an addiction. It's, like I said, it's an ongoing thing, but I really don't like tattoos. George is celebrating the opening of his own Mickey Mouse house. It's a lifelong dream come true for him. A home devoted to Disney where he can display the thousands of items he's collected. On an average year, George spends up to $85,000 traveling to all the theme parks to put together his own Magic Kingdom. I don't think anyone likes Disney as much as George. George treats his body as a walking collection. When Disney introduces a new character, he buys one for his house and gets one tattooed on his body. The tattoos also need maintenance. George has the fireworks above the Disney castle redone every year because the colors tend to fade. I have about 57 Mickeys all together. I also have uh, hidden Mickeys. A big thing with Disney is uh, hidden Mickeys. And the longest one was an Epcot ball. That took 15 hours to put on. George says he has spent close to $100,000 on his tattoos. He takes care of his family's needs, but any extra money goes to the mouse. George's obsession has not come without other costs. Currently, he is with Susan, his sixth wife, and his eldest daughter, now 19, moved out when she was 13 because she refused to decorate her room in the mandatory Disney fashion. Now I have a little problems with uh, my 14-year-old because uh, she likes in sync. Disney makes me happy. Disney gives me joy. They're my family, actually. I mean, you know, Sue and Amanda here, my other daughter, my family too, but Disney comes first. It makes up my childhood, but I didn't have a good childhood. I was just lonely, and I stayed myself. I was at that TV every day watching Mickey Mouse Club and stuff like that, and that was my family. My saying always is, and everybody knows it, is NBD, nothing but Disney. Uh, it's got to be Disney for me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Mickey has left the building. After 30 years of existing underground, artists and enthusiasts come together for one of the art's largest and grandest festivals, the New York Tattoo Convention. All right, all right. Hot tippers. The John F. Kennedy Jr. coin is offered at its face value of $10 plus postage and is limited to five coins per order. Call now. MSNBC Investigates continues with... If you want to be scared, you're in the right place. Tattoos. The wild, the shocking, the extreme. 
When my work offends people, I love it. They are the new national trend. Nearly 12 million Americans have at least one tattoo, but for some, one is not enough. The legend of Sleepy Hollow, the entire leg. The dentist scene from the Three Stooges. Meet the people who go to extremes. What does their skin art say about them? What does it say about our society? And how safe is it? Travel with us into a world unknown on this MSNBC Investigates. Tattoos, skin deep. Once again, Lester Holt. Welcome back. The internet has also become a big part of the tattoo industry. Just using the keyword tattoo, you can find many links to articles, clubs, safety tips, and upcoming conventions. Artists use it to advertise their gallery of work and to set up live chats with their fans and potential customers. There are even live webcams that feature people getting tattoos live on the net. The net has also become the place for those who want to show off and share their extreme tattoo collection. But for those people who want to see the artwork in person, there's only one place to go. And that, of course, is at the annual tattoo convention in New York City. American tattooing began in New York, growing out of the shops that covered Lower Manhattan and the boardwalks of Coney Island. In 1961, however, the city banned tattooing because of a hepatitis scare and the artists of New York were forced to go underground. But New York was not the only state to restrict the art. Tattooing is still illegal in the states of Massachusetts, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Vermont. It was actually in New York City that the modern tattoo machine was invented in the late 19th century. Michael McCabe, a manager at Sacred Tattoo, is a tattoo historian and author of several books on the craft. He believes that modern tattoo culture has its roots in New York. Because New York City is really the birthplace of electric ta of modern 20th century tattooing, uh, I don't know, it's, it's symbolic of the process that tattooing as an art form has gone through in, over the past century. Originally, tattooing was a very homespun, almost like a hobby type of an enterprise. Sailors would do it on board ship during their off hours. Um, gangs would possibly do it, but it was all done by hand before the machine. It was not until 1997 that the city council and health commissioner lifted the ban and tattooing came out of the closet. Very quickly, studios exploded throughout the city and there are currently over 400 licensed tattoo artists giving legitimacy to what McCabe believes is one of the most intimate of art forms. You can like draw stuff on paper, you can do like a beautiful drawing. Now try to do it on a human body, and don't make a mistake either, because that thing's going to stick there forever. And you're sitting there holding this pulsing, you can feel the blood going right through the veins while you're working on them. It's bleeding, it's warm, you're looking into the eyes of this person, and they're looking at you and they're like, oh, you know, they're trusting you with themselves. You know, it's a very heavy thing, it's a very beautiful thing, if you take it responsibly and you do the right thing and do a good job, because it's incumbent on you to do a good job if you're going to take your art form uh, seriously. The regulation of tattooing in New York coincided with a huge surge of Americans seeking tattoos. McCabe feels this is due to the fact that the art is now open to everyone. Stereotypically, at the turn of the century, up until like the 1970s, basically tattooing was a male masculine sport. But it's completely out the window now. The whole thing is blown past it. You have women getting tattooed at numbers that you never saw before. And then you also have a racial thing. Up until very recently, like possibly the last five years, tattooing basically was used by lighter skinned people. Now you have a lot of uh, African American people coming in and they're turning to their heroes. Like when you watch the, the NBA playoffs, a lot of guys, Marcus Canby, pretty heavily tattooed. Obviously uh, Rodman, so a certain element in Afro American youth culture gravitate towards that. Of the 100 tattoo studios now operating in the city, Sacred, located on Canal Street in New York's Chinatown, is the largest, producing an average of 24 new tattoos a day. Bruce Kaplan, a former graphic artist, represents the new wave of tattooists with art training backgrounds. Dave had this skull here. He was curious what to do with it, so we decided to build all around it with this kind of biomechanical uh, oddity. I just wanted him to use his imagination. I didn't want to give him really any input on it. I wanted to see what he wanted to do. In the tattoo world, you get the best work 
if you really leave it up to the artist and say, hey, you know, I want what you want to give me. The mechanics of tattooing has changed very little over the past 100 years. The machine itself pierces the skin to the dermal layer and embeds the ink with each puncture at speed ranging from 32 to 3,600 punctures per minute. The number of needles used determines the detail of the work. A single needle for finer work and several needles for larger areas and shading. What has changed is the improved sterilization of the equipment and the variety of colors of inks now available. It's not really painful. It's kind of like a, uh, like a stinging. It's just, it's just uncomfortable. I can turn it up a little. When the powers that be finally gave tattooing the respect New York artists and enthusiasts were craving, the tattoo community came together in 1997 for the first tattoo convention Manhattan had ever seen. For this year's convention, Paul Booth has been preparing something special. For years, he's been working on a huge back piece for Jennifer. She hopes to unveil the masterpiece at the competition for best tattoo. This year, in the heart of Times Square at the Roseland Ballroom, the three-day, third annual New York City Tattoo Convention is proving how far the art and popularity of tattooing has come in the city. It has become a unique convention in that it draws tattooists and collectors from all over the world. Traditional Japanese tattoo artist Horicho is a huge attraction, as well as artists from England, Denmark, Italy, Cyprus, and Germany. I think now, because it was legalized recently in New York, it's sort of in its renaissance. I think it's going to be some very high quality tattooing. There's been tattooing from before, but now there's kids from art school, there's people that are educated that are getting into tattooing, and it's far higher caliber than it's ever been. At the convention, there are competitions in various categories for the best tattoos presented. And your name? Mike the Okay, Mike, which is it? The portrait piece? Yes. Who's it a portrait of? It's my daughter. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the entire leg. And who did the piece? Joey Nobody, Cliff's custom tattoo. Joey Nobody, folks. The dentist scene from the Three Stooges. Loving it? Love it. Walking around with your shirt off a lot? Trying. It's a great looking piece. Why don't you show the audience? Give them a good look. Take some time walking by. The Rock of Ages, it's kind of a more modernistic uh, view of Rock of Ages. Tell me about the back piece. Tattoos mean when the rainforest is gone, I'm gonna still have it on me. It's the only thing I'm gonna take with me when I'm dead. I, I can't explain it any more than that. The last day of the three-day festival is devoted to the heavily covered, climaxing with the judging of the best overall tattooed person. Although the back piece Paul Booth did on Jen took no prizes, Patty, another of his clients, won for the best black and gray piece and was back in the chair for more. It's a way of uh, reclaiming my body from nature. Like, the way I am is not the way I chose to be. It's sort of what I ended up with. And tattooing helps me to modify myself in a way that I choose to be and express myself through my own body. I think the fact that, like, everyone here has one, and, like, there's so many diversified people that it obviously proves that tattoos are okay now. And 
pretty much. I don't get as many weird looks as I used to. It's my form of expression. I think I, I was holding it in for years, but now I've done the piercing and the tattooing. I think I'm now being myself at last and not holding it all in. The tattoo industry has come a long way since the 1890s when Samuel O'Reilly opened up shop in New York with his electric engraving pen. His electric tattoo machine revolutionized the industry, but neither he nor the industry could ever have predicted its popularity today. At last count, there are some 12,000 tattoo artists who advertise their parlors across the country. When we return, the new age of body modification and one man's painful body of work. Time to rub the bunions. Great. You're so sweet, Johnny. <sighs> Between the toes. I know, I know. Oh. Just like any art, tattoos provoke a response. You either love them, hate them, or you just don't get them. And like all art, there are those artists who seek out controversy. In fact, they welcome it. What you're about to see is the so-called new age of body art. People who take their tattoos and their skin to the extreme and beyond. It's controversial, shocking, and we warn you, even difficult to look at. 33-year-old Michael Adonisio works at Andromeda on St. Mark's Place in New York City. He has been a body piercer for 11 years and seen the number of clients coming to him grow and grow. People today, if you look, a lot of the kids today, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff only because of the fact that for so long they've been so suppressed. It's like people have like this dire urge to search for something. Michael refers to himself as a flesh mechanic. He and many others are using new technology to bring on the new age of modifications. Inserting implants under the skin creates three-dimensional body art. The implanting is done, however, with no medical training or licensing, merely following the same standards set by the Department of Health for tattooing and piercing. Physicians warn that individuals seeking this work put themselves at serious risk of infection. This is the actual material that we do the implanting with. Pretty much any kind of shape or size or pattern or anything can be made. Most implants are done with Teflon, an inexpensive polymer resin that is available over the counter to anyone. 28-year-old Eric Sprague of Albany, New York, has been using his body as an ongoing performance piece. Many might question what meaning has gone behind the length and pain he has endured for art. The general hyped up way it goes is that, you know, man tries to become reptile. And the idea is to transform my body in such a matter that it's thought-provoking. By tattooing and modifying his entire appearance, Eric feels as if he has crossed over to another state of being and lifestyle. You sort of go through a looking glass. And some people worry, I wonder if somebody's staring at me. I wonder if people are looking at me. Well, I know people are staring at me all the time, so it just doesn't matter to me anymore. Eric has found an audience for himself by performing all over the country. He is a featured performer in the Jim Rose Circus and works to usher in the new age of the sideshow, working as a self-styled freak who swallows swords, eats fire and bugs, and uses tools in ways that are not recommended. Everything I do, I do as a self-fulfilling thing first. You know, should I become absolutely destitute or become a CPA or whatever, I'm still going to sit at home when nobody's around while I'm watching TV and want to eat a torch every now and then. Again, we want to stress this new trend of so-called body modification that is performed with Teflon implants should not be taken lightly. Since they are not done with a licensed or a medically trained official, the procedure can pose serious health risks. If you're considering getting a tattoo, you should take precautions to make sure your health isn't at risk. Do research. Make sure the artist works in a clean and neat shop. Often you can judge an artist by how neat he or she keeps their place of work. Don't be afraid to ask for specifics on what the artist will do to ensure your health and safety. Do they use sterilized equipment and gloves? All needles and tubes should be open right in front of you. And if for any reason you feel a tattoo artist won't or can't answer your questions, leave and find someone who will willingly work with you. When we return, removing the mark that before would last forever.
I'm happy for people without tattoos. I truly am. In 1997, I was as concerned about colorectal cancer as the average American. Aww. Brought to you in part by Marconi Communications. The boom in the tattoo industry is also a boom for plastic surgeons. For hundreds of thousands of people, their tattoos have turned into horrible mistakes. And unlike other fashion accessories that you can just throw away or stuff into the back of a closet, tattoos are permanent. They may fade, but they never go away. Unless you're willing to go through more pain and shell out more money. Lots of money. Even though artists are creating tattoos now that many will be proud to wear forever, many outgrow their tattoos, or for many reasons, choose to have them removed. Gail Saunders, now 45 and a mother of two, got a tattoo on the spur of the moment when she was 17. She began to dislike the work within a year and found that she didn't feel comfortable displaying it. She has been searching for years to correct the mistake she made over 25 years ago. The procedure itself takes about five, ten minutes. Okay, I'm so going to be watching. You're going to be watching? Oh, okay. It's probably even going to take less than that. Finally, she has found a guaranteed way to remove the tattoo that has caused her so much embarrassment. This is all you should feel, actually. Really? Yeah. Dr. Roy Geronimus of the Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York offers the latest in laser technology okay. to remove tattoos. The laser light is being absorbed by the tattoo, leaving a white steam bubble here, which will leave a small scab and generally heal within a week. The amazing thing is that the laser light is completely missing the normal skin, and it's only being absorbed by the tattoo pigment. Getting a tattoo is still a lot easier than getting it removed. Gail still needs several sessions to completely remove her tattoo. In some cases, removal can be painful. And at $400 per session, the cost is definitely more expensive than the tattoo itself. That's it. You made it. I've had uh, two treatments, three more to go, and this is the result so far. I'll just be so much more comfortable wearing a sleeveless shirt, a bathing suit, you know, anything that it showed. I never let it show. In 1996, an estimated 275,000 Americans went to doctors to get their tattoos removed. Experts believe that number will skyrocket to 410,000 this year. But whatever the advances in removal may be, one considering getting a tattoo should always look at it as a mark that is there for life. I'm happy for people without tattoos. I truly am. You know, uh, it's not for everybody. You know, if you don't want any tattoos, well, that, that's who you are. And I totally respect that. When it comes to putting a tattoo on your body, I mean, it's a permanent mark. And think a long time, think long and hard. I mean, what kind of an impact it's going to have on your life. I, I recommend if you're not ready for a tattoo, don't get it. Be kind of clear on what you're doing and don't, you know, certainly don't do it on a drunken night out, you know, and wake up the next day with some, you know, gorilla tattoo on your arm. <laughs> what is this? But uh, really think about it and, uh, and, and know you're going to keep it for, for many years. Whether you're conscious of it or not, it's going to carry meaning for you in your life. You know, even if you're not aware that that's what it's doing or if you're not aware of what, it, what that meaning is, it's going to carry some sort of meaning to you. My tattoos, for me, are somewhere between uh, being a vent hole and being armor, I would say. Each person's reason for getting tattooed is definitely different. And the person who maybe gets um, in loving memory of mom, that tattoo is very important to that individual. Well, the person who gets the Tasmanian devil, oddly enough, on their arm, to them, that image is important to them. And you have to respect that. If I had to do it all over again, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Whatever one thinks about tattooing, one thing is for sure. With so many people getting tattooed, the stereotypes are disappearing. 
and the art is making its way into the mainstream. It's becoming very popular think, for this generation, eh? like 20-somethings and up, you know, give or take a few years. When we're all in our 80s or 90s, we're going to be seeing a lot of heavily tattooed people in the old age homes. In the old days, like the pickup line at a bar would be, what's your sign? And now it's like, hey, who does your work? You know, so it's like all this kind of like uh, vocabulary has sort of kind of infiltrated our culture. And like people are sitting around, my mother sitting around talking to a guy in the checkout line, saying, who does your work? My mother's 75 years old. There are risks associated with tattoo removal, though they are quite low. But you should know complete removal of a tattoo is nearly impossible and quite rare. A big consideration and life decision for those who want to take tattoos to the extreme. That's this edition of MSNBC Investigates Tattoos. I'm Lester Holt. Thanks for joining us.